How's it going everyone? My, my, uh, huh. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped. The Manscaped team sent me the all-in-one perfect package 4.0. This came with both ball toner and ball deodorant. Am I allowed to say things like this on YouTube? It, it feels filthy. Maybe you're sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, I, I don't know if I quite qualify. Maybe I'm not manly, burly, tough enough. I'm here using the product, so I think that should inform you that the barrier of masculinity is somewhere between low and non-existent. The main sell point of this package is their brand new Lawn Mower 4.0. It's compact, comfortable to hold, and it's waterproof, which is very helpful. The charging dock looks futuristic and like somewhere I would store my charging crystals. It actually has a light in case, you know, you have trouble finding things. I specifically used it on my beard for the sake of a demo, but yeah, you can use it on any body hair. They do just recommend that if you do do that to switch out the blades. The box also came with the Manscaped Daily News, which is cheeky and funny and just overall quite enjoyable. If you follow the link I provide or use the promo code THUMBS20, you'll get 20% off free shipping and two free gifts. These gifts include a travel bag and a pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs. There's a lot of things I'm not going to show you in this video, I'm not going to include me in these boxers, but I will say I wore them to the gym and they were super comfortable. I went for a run in them and I felt like Barry Allen, you know, if he had just freshly shaved his entire body. I also really appreciate this sleek, sophisticated looking shaving kit. I've used the same one for probably 10 or more years. And you know, it looks like it was made for a teenager. So yeah, I like having something that looks like it was made for an adult. Thank you to Manscaped again for sponsoring this video. If you do decide to check it out, please use that link and or promo code. Get yourself a sweet discount, couple of free gifts. And if we're going to talk about balls so much at the top of this video, I want to talk about baseballs. Why are there so many baseballs in this game? It's a giant baseball for parties. Actually, seems the giant baseball is a soccer ball that's been painted over. It would be easier to draw that way. In the Giga Queen fight, she rains down baseballs on us that we have to punch back at her, sending down a mega baseball for their final attack. Even the moon out Noelle's window is a baseball. Why are there so many baseballs? Easter eggs be damned. I want to know more about baseballs. But since I can't find any more, we can absolutely talk about Easter eggs. There's an extra bit of dialogue if you shine the blue bird spotlight on Birdly. Chris, stop taunting me with that appealing blue shape. Y you're just lucky this isn't online, or, or, or you wouldn't be able to taunt. This is actually a Smash Bros reference. As with the launch of Super Smash Bros Ultimate, the ability to taunt online was disabled. While walking through the streets of the Cyber City, alone with Chris, Noelle reminisces about the two of them growing up together, telling stories about Chris's older brother Asriel and her older sister Des, all while slowly spelling out the word December. That'll be important in just a minute here, but I also wanted to point out that Noelle refers to herself being weird and that Chris is the only one who knows how weird she is and that everyone knows how weird Chris is. This could have major implications for why that snow grave route within the game files is referred to as the weird route. During Birdly's backstory, when it describes the spelling bee between Birdly and Noelle, it says that on the last word, she got nervous and couldn't speak, whereas up to that point, she was actively spelling out the words more quickly than Birdly, once again showing us the significance of December to her. And while there's a chance December as a month is significant, which obviously it is, everything about her family is holiday themed, it has been theorized that this is her sister's full name. Des is short for December. Much later on in the hospital at the end of chapter 2, Noelle's father talks about how with him in the hospital, it's just Noelle and her mother. I wish I knew healing magic in real life. Then I could make you better and it wouldn't just be me and mom. Your mother is... Hey, it's okay sweetheart. I'm getting better. Des has seemingly passed away. We don't know specifically what's going on with Rudy. It could be something hereditary. And seemingly, she's been gone since Noelle was quite young. It's something that haunts her and comes up in her life frequently. Another hint at this is the fact that 
every date in Noelle's room is December 25th. That could just be a fun Christmassy time for their holiday oriented family, or it could be a traumatic day that she can't forget. While we're on the subject of Noelle's room within the mansion, whoa, this statue rocks. Hey, Ralsei, can we take this for my room? But that would be stealing. You stole the Susie-like statue. Something that we've obviously seen before when Ralsei is detailing the three heroes who are destined to save the world. And we add the Susie-like statue to Susie's room. <laughs> Jealous of my cool statue, Chris? Huh, what? No, it's not me, it's just cool. We can also interact with this head of Ice E. From the search, is Ice E real cryptid? It's a cross between Ice E and something else. Hey Chris, take this for your room. That would be stealing. You stole the Ice E statue for some reason. Now we have Ice E's head inside our room. This maybe isn't the best thing in your room. That's obviously the moss, we all know that. The cafe owner talking about their mission statement. One of the things seemingly done for the queen was to have melons smashed with karate chops repeatedly for no apparent reason. To have barrels thrown from the rafters. Seemingly referencing both Fruit Ninja and the Donkey Kong series. In this room, these Swatchlings are watching a video about the creation of the Dark Fountain. It's apparently too smoky to see who the knight is. Queen has been watching very closely. Also, it's Cyber City's Funniest Home Videos, referencing the old TV program, America's Funniest Home Videos. If you interact with this castle before you get the Werewire's attention, this castle looks like it has worn many sieges. After defeating the Werewire, you both get a chest with a revive dust, and it seems that peace has returned to the castle. If you come back to this lever after having done the whole lake segment, pulling this lever summons a swan boat. You think about releasing enough swans to clog up the river. If you interact again, ah, are they reminiscing about our ride? Not quite, Ralsei. For the camera, you're allowed to do various poses. Hug, Ralsei. Chris? Did they really take a picture of that? Um, let's keep going. Once Susie has rejoined the party, you can head back. I was fishing for lost pottery in the acid when I found this photo. Please, take a look. Uh, it sure is a nice photo. Susie, do you want it for your room? The hell would I want this for? If you do a rude gesture. C Chris! Did it really take a picture of that? It's the same dialogue, but Ralsei is visibly shocked rather than blushing. The Swatchling discovered it again while fishing, Ralsei has no comment this time, and Susie is impressed. <laughs> That's awesome, Chris. If you do the peace sign... I bet it must have been a wonderful picture. What? We were facing the wrong way? More fishing and showing us the picture. Please take a look. Chris. You look nice in this one. Or if you do not pose, that's okay, Chris. Let's keep going. And no pictures taken. And if you head back, there's obviously no picture to see. And an interaction that exists in any of these branches, it's completed its migration. And if you do not get a photo taken, Ralsei's status is now blank prince. Doesn't even have a photo. If you tell Ralsei you don't care about what Susie's doing right now, uh, are you sure? It might be interesting. You aren't wondering at all? Perhaps if you could potentially see it, would you want to know? Really don't care. Well then, I suppose if you aren't interested, that's that. Let's keep going, Chris. Geronimo! And you straight up end up skipping that scene between Susie and Noelle. In this top floor of the mansion, in the area where you fight the queen, there is this one stray gray pixel. In the same spot, there is a stray pixel in the king's fight. Why? Why does Toby torture me like this? During one of the queen's attacks, where we see a bunch of random faces of different citizens spewing out their comments, we have a chance to see the everyman appear. 
this recurring mysterious figure throughout the series so far, who we still kind of know nothing about. The Everyman is actually the only one of these to specifically say nothing when appearing on screen. In the first part of this final battle against the Queen, where she brings in a plugged-in servant Birdly, if rather than acting to save Birdly, we focus fire on the Queen and ignore him entirely, she lets you know that you've only depleted the health points of her chair. I can simply make another barrier using my drink. Bottoms up. Wait a second. Hey chat, does anyone know what happened to that stuff? Oh dear, it seems someone sipped up all of my shield power. In other words, nothing's stopping us from beating you up now, huh? Well, not nothing. She throws Birdly in front of you. Mr. Birdie here still has maximum HP, so unless you want your dear friend to get hurt, I recommend letting him hurt you instead. Birdly turns against her. You won't control me. What? What are you doing? Taking off this plug. Stop. Stop that at once. Your arm will... Stop! And with a massive explosion, Birdly sets himself free. What the hell, man? Your arm is... That was stupid. Yes, it was, wasn't it? It's not praise. Chris, Susie, I can't do much with a fried wing. Please, promise you'll save Noel. We, we promise. Birdly! Hey, hey, Birdly, are you okay? Everything getting dark. Only... And, 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 and the same as before, he tries to get a kiss off of, off of Susie. After our whole conversation about how it's okay to make mistakes, and Birdly took that as meaning being dumb is better, as we head off to save Noel, he says, May the smarts not be with you. Being a little bit of a double spun play on May the Force be with you. If you keep pestering him on the ground here, he thinks Chris is flirting, he turns them down. Susie is who he chooses to pursue in the visual novel of life. If you leave and head back through either direction of the screen, Susie will be following the group again, and you talk to Birdly? Ah, Susan! Returned to feast upon my sprightly visage. What? You look awful. Ah, such dare is soon to my ears. What the hell are you saying? How about a kiss for luck? Stop mumbling! A kiss for me to change RNG? random number generator because he only speaks in gamer terms when everyone wakes back up as birdly gets ready to leave uh, huh that's funny my right arm won't move oh it must have fallen asleep here i'll carry your books for you birdly uh, noel you're always helping me thank you we have the callback to our group transformation like some sort of Megazord. Ralse in his stool form, Susie and Chris positioned to hold the joysticks together. At least Ralse doesn't get crushed this time. This is our ultimate... Uh, wait a sec, now that you mention it. There is one more minor difference. After the point in the battle where Birdly unplugs his own face, when assembling everyone ahead of this final encounter. The original version plays out like this. Fear not, your knight in glow in the dark armor is here. Chris, Susie, my energy is still too low to help you fight, so I found help for you. Behold, comrades. And the other version with Birdly's broken wing. Or arm? I am totally unsure what to call it. As we fall to the bottom, Birdly swoops in to save the day. Even with his bandaged up arm. Chris, Susie, I can't do much for you like this. So I found help for you. Behold, comrades! Every character you recruited along the way will join this final form. If you instead attacked and chased them all away, none of them will be here to join this final version. The golden statue is retrieved from the toilet. 
and your thrash machine joins as well, regardless of if it was a duck or anything else. But if it was a duck, you end up with this incredible duck head. Ah, what a worthy opponent. Other than just having that handsome duck head, you will have a few duck-based abilities in this battle. If you choose to activate duck mode, you have sucky attacks and it costs 50 TP. Duck mode engaged, a totally sucking aura, fired up. And we now have these little ducks circling around us. Our attacks now squeak whenever they land. As Queen shuts down, we see this static behind the robot's eyes. Mirroring this blank, staticky look that we've seen Spamton give when talking to them. The closet is spacious and full of old electronics. A large person could easily fit inside. Maybe this has to do with the Giga Queen, but it seemingly has much darker implications on that genocide route. The closet is full of many backup devices like extra mice, extra keyboards, or extra maracas. This is a callback to chapter 1 when inspecting the library and we could see the annoying dog inside playing with maracas instead of finishing the game they were working on. A bit of a meta joke expanded on further here. There is a special cutscene in Sansa's if you only go around these shelves. I missed it initially. People had to tell me to go back. Hey, hey, forget something? Why, I, yes, I, I think I left my eggs on the counter? Guess your memory is not what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> there is really egg on my face now, is there not? Ah, you're excused. Now it sounds as if you are egging me on. Egg on or egg off, I expect a lot from you. Well, I am exceptional. <laughs> and don't forget me, your egg's husband. Ah, uh, hello, Asgore. Sans, it's so awkward he had to turn away. Tori, I didn't expect to see you here, but I, I have some extra flowers, and I was wondering if... Oh, I was just about to go, actually. Uh, oh, sure. Home is where the heart is. <laughs> um, so... When Asriel comes home, yes, we should all discuss that together soon. Onky donkey, say hi to Chris for me. Of course, have a nice day. You know what I want, Bone Man. Yep, free pickles. Why, thank you. No wonder his fridge was filled with pickles. Can I ask, what kind of flowers do you think would make her remember how she felt before? Uh... Maybe you should talk to your plants about that. <laughs> don't worry, they're the first ones I asked. They're such good listeners, you know, flowers. Well, yeah, nothing like a captive audience. Now, this can just be alluding to the fact that Asgore is a bit of a lonely sad sack in the world of Deltarune, but it simultaneously does work as a pretty dark, pretty powerful callback to the fact that Asgore and Toriel would have visited Asriel's grave and thus been speaking to the captive flower audience of Flowey. I don't think it's meant to actually tie into that world or bear any specific implications, but I think when scripting this out, Toby knew full well that it would make us think of that. He's not necessarily drawing a connection here, not one to build a theory around at least, but he knows. He knows he's messing with our minds. Yes, <laughs> I even keep them in glass. Uh, like that movie, Beauty and the Beast. Yes, it, it's very similar to that movie. This isn't the first time this has come up. Interacting with the flowers next to Rudy's bed in the hospital in chapter one will also specifically reference Beauty and the Beast. This is an interaction I think I actually missed when first covering chapter one. A bunch of roses in a glass container. Hey, I'm happy your dad brought me flowers, but roses? What is this man, Beauty and the Beast? That ain't gonna work, man. We're both beasts. And if you actually interact with it again, Chris, I love your dad, but Asgore, if you want to go to the prom with me, just ask. Well, have a good one. <laughs> I'm trying. Hey, Chris, uh, uh, never mind. 
Asgore is the one who left Rudy flowers. If after that awkward cutscene in the grocery store you come to visit, sorry, I used up a lot of my energy just now. Probably not going to be very fun to talk to. Thanks for visiting though, Chris. And you too, Susie. There's an extra line of dialogue after you ask Rudy about his situation. <sighs> Seems like I need some more tests. So just gotta wait it out. They can't keep me down for too long, baby. Sooner or later, I'm busting out of here. Besides, your dad ain't much without his main man. And as we actually specifically saw on Asgore's fridge, Rudy was Asgore's best man at his wedding. Yeah, he had to ask the store guy for free pickles. Damn it, man. You know I would give you free pickles. I'll kick that store guy's bony little ass. Yeah, me too. We'll make him into a goddamn xylophone. Which is a reference to the 1929 short Disney film, The Skeleton Dance. We can see in the library we're no longer blocked from going upstairs. I had hoped there would be something more exciting up here. We can still talk to this bent over bird character. I love reading books, especially the books upstairs. But with them in the way, we can only actually access a couple of them. It's book one about souls. Read? The soul has long been called many things. The font of our compassion. The source of our will. Considering characters in Undertale will talk in unique fonts, and they all have those different typer values as discussed in the Gaster video volume 2. The container of our life force. But even now, the true function of it is unknown. And on the other shelf, How to Care for a Human. It's a book for monsters on how to care for humans. Look in the back. According to the card in the back, looks like your mother took it out repeatedly many years ago. And if you look inside, there are photos of unfamiliar humans inside. You shut the book quickly. What kind of major implications does that have? It definitely ties into the events of Undertale. I don't really know if that'll pay off in this series. Something I've been very eager and interested to do since first playing this game about a month ago is to head back to our castle town with everyone recruited and go to the cafe. Each character has unique dialogue when standing by themselves and some of them have additional dialogue when paired together correctly. So I just thought it would be fun to go through each of those and review the different pairing options and see what they have to say. I'll go through the individual characters first, starting with Rudin. Hey boss, I'll have a dark candy starfay. Hathi is going to order a heart foam latte. Looks like it wants to osmos some flavorful cubes. Looks like it wants to be dabbed with rubbing alcohol. Everything tastes better with a normally shaped body. Lemonade? Please. Boss, you're treating me? Oh, you shouldn't have. Head Hathi drinks an iced tea in silence. Pipu! Nothing beats a nice shot of espresso. Want me to give you a shot, too? Namu Namu, very good. It's drinking Cake's Electric Milk JPEG, which is specifically what those guys used to heal in that battle. It has some kind of energy drink. Ugh, great gag. It's drinking melted cheese. Want to share my soda? We'll both get sick that way. <laughs> Boss, shall we sit down and enjoy a nice Earl Grey? It's crushing its energy drink with its hand. It's getting electricity from the melted cheese, like a water wheel. And you actually can't place the task manager, presumably because there's only one and they're already hanging out over here. Boss, this cafe is so unrefined, so plain. Why don't we make it into an animal cafe? You can be one of the animals too, boss. And their cat seems well behaved. Now we can start playing around with working on pairing them off. Most of these come down to these tiered pairings like a Rudin with a Rudin Ranger, or a Werewire with a Were Werewire, but there's also goofy ones like sticking a cat and a mouse together, or a Dust Bunny and the Butler. Rudin and Hathi together? Sure is great to be here with my best friend Hathi. Hathi seems fine. Maybe not quite as enthusiastic. With a Rudin Ranger? Sigh. Does this guy have to one-up me on everything? I'll have a double Starfay. No, triple. Oh, 
Hi, boss. A big kiss assy smile, I'm sure. Hathy paired with a head Hathy. Hathy is letting head Hathy have a sip of her latte. Head Hathy doesn't seem so alone. A rabbit and a swanchling. I'm the dust off his shoulder. Sukiri, we'll make sure to clean our plates. Confirming Sukiri. This actually plays up a little bit of a relationship we see forming outside, where the Swatchling is here sweeping away, glad to have so much space, alongside a Rabbik, also sweeping. It's nice to make friends that like good, clean fun. Head Hathy with a Wear Wear Wire. Head Hathy drinks an iced tea in silence. It seems relaxed, its partner is so quiet. And. It says nothing. An ambulance and the Vero Vero Kun. I'll get you next time. Pippo, want some more sugar? We don't get along. But we can drink together. A task paired with a mouse. Meow. Burr. So I, I guess mouse go burr. Wear wire with a wear wear wire. It seems annoyed that its energy drink has been crushed. It's crushing many of the surrounding drinks. There are a couple other specific interactions. If you fill the tables with swatchlings, boss, are you enjoying your butler cafe? If you specifically pair off these two and put a wear wear wire north of the head hathy, I don't believe this table matters. You interact with these two first, it's relaxed, its partner is so quiet, it has nothing to say, and the third one now, it's staring at the southern seats and crushing its drink hard. And Head Hathy and the regular Werewire don't usually have an interaction, they just have their standard dialogues, but this guy lurking up at the top does have something new. Looks like it's about to flip its table over. As long as you had properly recruited them, we have a Bloxer and a Wear Wear Wire that appear in the party dojo. My power level is falling behind the others. All I can do now is gasp and comment on the battle. Looks like it won't forgive you for sparing it. Unless you can beat it in a fight. And the Clover will actually comment on them. Who's that tall, dark, and kinda creepy person? You mean the Werewire? Their neck just looks so fluffy. So, like I care, she wants to rub her face in it. Speaking to this ball here all alone, it's a bit scary moving to a new place, but as a ball, there's nothing to sphere except sphere itself. Pretty good attitude, actually. If you properly recruited every enemy from the cyber world, then Newbert will show up in your castle town. Newbert's had a wild ride. Time to settle down. Give my riches to the weak. And we see the return of this ball character wearing one of the wigs seen in that previous segment of the mansion. With this windfall, I've ceased to be spherical. Newbert, you're one of a kind. My man. And there is no recruiting this trash can, they just will be here. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm trashy, haha. <laughs> I bet I'm gonna make a lot of new friends. And speaking to the jacks slash hat rack coat rack next to them, oh, who is this guy? He's scary. He does tend to concern me a little bit as well. And with that, I've covered everything that I specifically know of within this chapter. The things that I discovered myself, as well as the odd insert from people that felt relevant along the way. Obviously at this point, I still have not covered absolutely everything. There are things scattered throughout the entirety of this chapter that I overlooked. I thank you enormously for sharing those in the comments. It is going to take me a lot of effort to comb through literally thousands of comments and interactions in our Discord server, trying to compile absolutely every little thing that people had to share. So there should be a fifth video. It is just going to be a ways off because that is going to be a wild undertaking. <laughs> thank you all so much for sticking with me through this series. And thank you once again to Manscaped, especially for sending me this shirt that I might never wear in public, maybe only at the gym, 
but then probably only if I turn it inside out. I kid, they were extremely easy to work with and I kind of love that this company is willing to have a sense of humor about their own product. People are gonna snigger and laugh no matter what, so they might as well lean into that a little bit. If you do decide to order, please follow the link in the pinned comments or the description and use the promo code THUMBS20 at checkout. Thank you to patrons of the channel for their continued support. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.